So, uh, Andrew, welcome. Welcome back to FACE. How are you, buddy? We are live. Thanks so much for bringing me up, Dale. Yeah, Andrew, nice to uh, have you back. Uh, You come back and you haven't even said anything and you got a promotion. I bet your your employer doesn't do that, but your employer is you. Exactly. So uh, I want you to give yourself a raise to, uh, this week. Here we go. Let's All see right. how the market does. All right. So I, I went to your stream last week. Do you want to show your uh, stuff? I could stop sharing and you could take over. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a bunch of really good charts to look through today. So let me go ahead and share my screen. So uh, are you in? have you been converted that we're in a new bull market, Andrew? Yeah, I believe we are. I think there's okay. I think there's a lot of nuance to that. Let me know if you can see my screen. Got him up there, yes. Yeah, I think there's a lot of nuance to that. I think these cycles are happening so quickly now, Dale, where I think the whole reason why we were in a bear market last year was because inflation was really accelerating. And that was the big problem. That was driving bond yields so much higher. And that was just a huge concern for the market as the bond volatility increased then you had equity volatility increasing as well and that was the big headwind i think the good thing about this year and i think you know really the big reason why the market has rallied so much is that inflation has come down significantly so if you can see right here this is a monitor that i look at all the time it's our true inflation dashboard this thing came off of its peak of around 12 percent now it's right around 2.46%. So I do believe that the bear market that we had because inflation was just ripping to the upside and it was a runaway freight train, I think that is over. But to be honest, now that we are here and inflation has decelerated so much, now I think the odds of getting you know a further deceleration like this are very, very low. So I think a lot of the good news, to be honest, is really in the price at this point. So I think, yeah, this is a new bull market, uh, quote unquote. But I think a lot of the bull market, you know, these cycles move so fast is already in the price. Okay. Uh, Do you think the S&Ps could see new all time highs, melt up stuff like a lot of people are talking, you know, the melt up guys that were talking 5,400, 6,000? s and I think it, uh, I don't really see that to be honest. I mean, if we look over here, this is what we've seen year to date so far for the market. And yeah, especially, as, exactly. Especially as we get to a quarter end or a end of the first half or even the end of a year, I always like to take a step back and just take a look at, you know, where has the market been so far? And yeah, as you just said, the semiconductors are up 40% this year. Blockchain ETF up huge. The XLK mega cap tech is up huge. Same thing as the ARK Innovation ETF. So we're basically seeing a reversal of last year's price action where all of those areas of the market really suffered. Now they've all bounced back. So this has been a complete unwind. But with that being said, you know a lot of people are discussing this. But the participation in the market, you know, just really is not that great. So if we look, for example, like, you know, let's pull up, we will go to like the small caps. Um, you can see here. The Russell. Yeah, the Russell. Yeah, the small caps are still trading very close to their lows. So I believe, you know, market participants, they're essentially pricing in that, hey, inflation is getting a lot better, which is good. We can start to buy some of those growth assets back. But hey, the economy is actually getting quite a bit worse. Now we have interest rates that are really high. That's going to cause a lot of stress. And you know the real estate sector, uh, banking, which we've already seen, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so we're let just me ask you this. not you seeing said, anything in the small. Let, let me ask you this. Uh, yeah. Your comment or the adverb you use uh, after the banking problems was yeah. seen, seen past tense do you believe that that's behind us really no i i don't think so i mean we have this regional bank etf right here the kre yeah right and look how close it still is to the prior lows like we've had a move off like i guess you could call this a relief rally 
but there's there's still no confidence in this group. I I think to be honest, man, like the major change is as soon as this banking crisis kicked off, the Federal Reserve just jumped in and they papered over the problem with their BTFP program. That's what bo- uh, boosted the market. They actually the banking crisis saved the market, didn't it? Exactly. As soon as we got that crisis and the central bank stepped in, that was essentially like their flinching moment. And now with 2020 hindsight, we can see that the market has done absolutely incredible since that time. So I think the bank stuff is certainly not over. But I think for markets, everyone has gotten very comfortable essentially assuming, hey, even if there is another situation with banks, the central bank is going to step in. And that's even more bullish for something like the NASDAQ, which I just pulled up over here. Okay. Bull flag. Yeah, so this the NASDAQ- is a, uh, this is a daily. So yesterday looks like a breakout, and we pulled back. What's that? Is that a VWAP? That or uh, yellow line? Yes. So this is pretty cool right here. So this this VWAP that I drew on the chart, the yellow line, I anchored this from when Nvidia reported their really okay. good earnings report about a month ago, because I think oh, that's yeah. when the market had a very big character change. Um, so now we're essentially at a point where most investors came into this year saying this is going to be a horrible year. You know, I'm under position in equities, potentially short equities. We got a fantastic year. All of these trends really accelerated when Nvidia put up that earnings yeah. report. But now we're trading pretty close to the 20 day simple moving average, even though we had a fantastic day yesterday. Yeah. Now that we got this chip news. Let's see how NVIDIA is actually doing in pre-market. Um, uh, the chip news about uh, not selling um, NVIDIA chips to China? Yep. Okay. So uh, NVID- uh, Michael Bergman saying we're down 13. So I showed NVIDIA. It has a two-drive formation. So, uh, it, you know, I, I would allow for, well, I would allow. The market could still, you know, uh, maybe after the stip. But if that caves, and look at Microsoft as well, Andrew, uh, that led the parade, and uh, that's like almost putting in some type of right shoulder here. Look at that. Exactly. So my point here is, if we look at the VIX, like it's obviously been massacred. Yeah. And now at, into the end of the quarter, you know, I notice this dynamic all the time. All these investment managers, right now it's like a fight for survival. And everyone is trying to get into the themes that have done really well the first half of the year. I truly believe that this Window week dressing. right here. Exactly. Okay. I, I think this week right here in the NASDAQ, about like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Yeah. I think this was a pretty big capitulation where investors were just like, you know what? I got to get into this tech stuff. Yeah. And even after yesterday's candle, we've still got some of those players underwater. So I believe that into quarter end, I think the odds of having like some massive sell-off are probably pretty slim. But I think as we get beyond this quarter end and investors can really start actually playing the game again, I think things like this, like what's happening in Microsoft that you just mentioned, same thing with Apple over here. Apple has just been a freight train higher. Now we have to start thinking about what are they going to put up for their next earnings report. And I think that's where we could see some of these trends come under a little bit of pressure. Let me ask you, keep that chart up there. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you see that uptrend that we've had compared to uh, the Qs, where we gap, gap down, gap up, um, it, and there's a lot of dots. Um, It almost looks like in illiquid stock to me, the way that chart looks, you know, how where you, you know, you get, you have to make appointments to trade. It mm-hmm. doesn't, uh, to me, it's almost like one bad day can take away what's been accomplished on the left in a hurry. And a oh, few yeah. bad weeks could too. So um, I just that Apple chart, that gappy, um uh it's like a managed stock um and doesn't look liquid to me by and i know they do huge volume 
But uh, put any other chart up there and you won't see this kind of um, spaces in between candles and uh, it's more of a fluid chart than this. You could put anything up, even yeah. Microsoft on the way up uh, to, yeah. didn't have dots. Yeah, let's see Microsoft. You know, I don't know, maybe it's, you know, uh, just something that looks unusual to me. It definitely uh, does. I mean, and that I looks think... so much, doesn't that look different? It definitely does. And even more so. Like they all do. Like, like Netflix, for example. This one looks like it's really having like yeah. legitimate price moves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's not the, dot, you know, all the candles, uh, you know, there's kind of a rhythm to it, even though it was, you know, with a blow off. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, that's just something I noticed on Apple. Yeah. So I think these these stocks. I'm underwater on my shorts in Apple. <clears throat> oh, yeah. 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 That. I think after quarter end, that's where we could see some of these sort of disruptions in the market. But even like right here, like in Netflix, for example, it's trading right on the 20 day simple moving average. Yeah. I mean, same thing if we just look at the S&P 500. The 20 day SMA, this is a really big level for trend followers. So all yeah. it would really take is like, you know, maybe one bad day in the market. Right. And suddenly if we find ourselves slightly below that level. I think a lot of investors have really just been stopped into the market because they're like, you we'll, know what? We'll go to 4,200 in a heartbeat, which was the breakout. Exactly. And there's a little gap yeah. here as well. Yeah. Yeah. So this is another good one. If you look over here, this is just what these indices have done for the month of June. Yeah. And I mean, look at these performances. Like, you know, to me, this is almost like a good half year's worth of returns. Right. In just a few weeks. So like what I notice is with a lot of these trends, they typically accelerate at the beginning of a trend and they typically accelerate, you know, once you get the capitulation towards the end of a trend. And I mean, this right here in the NASDAQ at the peak, it was up close to 7% for the month. That is not like a typical month in the market. So I think at the very least, like, now investors are really positioned for the price action that happened in the first six months of the year. In the first six months of the year, NASDAQ just went up in a straight line. I believe it's up almost 40% so far year to date. Now everyone's like, you know what? I'm going to catch the next 40% in the second half of the year. And I think at the very, very least, the odds of getting another repeat of a 40% half in the NASDAQ is incredibly slim to none. If this thing were to go up another 40%, you know, this QQQ would literally be well, well, well beyond the all time highs. So, is it your style to just let things pull back and look for entries on the long side? Or um, would you tactically look to take advantage of that correction? Yeah, I think for right now, for my system, my trend model, which is pretty much what I use to navigate the market. Right now, it's at a plus three. And when it's at a plus three, it's pretty much saying the market is in a rising condition. Okay. But if we were to get you know, some action around this 20-day simple moving average, that could change very, very quickly. So for me right now, like, I'm just being cognizant of the fact that, hey, we don't really have a sell signal in the market at the moment. But after this quarter rolls over, you know, I think that's where we could get some mean reversion or really just some of the latecomers to this rally getting stopped out. I would much rather add some longs if we actually do get you know some sort of more meaningful market correction because we haven't gotten a correction so far in 2023. And I think it would just be a little bit naive to think like, oh, we're going to go the entire year and we're never going to get a market correction. Like I just haven't seen that happen. Yeah. So, so the last important low was the March low, which was uh, the banking issues. Exactly. The banking issues. Okay. So I think there's there's some good themes that I'm looking at. Um, the one that I'm watching most closely into the summer, this is really what I'm most closely focused on, is the crypto theme. Okay. And if we look here, you know, similar to AI, where there was like the NVIDIA catalyst that really kicked things off. We have the potential catalyst, which is the BlackRock ETF. 
um, okay. that was already filed for, and that could potentially be approved in August. What I'm noticing here in Bitcoin is we had basically like a, what in hindsight was a big shakeout for a couple of months. And we just zipped right up the right yeah. side of this base very quickly. Now we're just putting in a sideways pattern, but really what I'm looking at is on the weekly time frame. If we look over here on this weekly chart. This right here is our yearly value area high. It's up closer to about 35,000. And I think if that ETF gets approved, I don't really see why we can't get up to that 35,000. We're seeing pretty much every other risk asset. You know, like if we yeah. look at, for example, again, the, the NASDAQ, this one already broke beyond its yearly value or a high and then had a really fantastic move beyond that. So yeah, this, this crypto trend, it's sort of been falling behind equities, which have really ripped. And I think over the summer, if we get that uh, approval of the ETF, I think that one could be a good mover. So I'm trying to find like little trades where there's actually a real catalyst or an actual event and kind of focus on those while I know there's a lot of big risk in the overall market. Okay. Um, do you look at grains? No, let's look at this VIX. Go back to the VIX. All right. Yeah. Um, so tell me. Hated, hated, hated index. Guys selling vol all year long, cleaning up. Um, I, I heard um, uh, that there have we're, we're hitting record highs of VIX calls um, being traded. I mean, there's people on both sides of the trade, but the volume we have record volume in in VIX calls over last week, mm -hmm. and it's not like there was a lot of move. It was, you know, making new lows there. Yeah. So I'm curious. Yeah, that's definitely something I've been looking at as well. What's strange is like I saw that same exact stat. I also saw that in this June VIX expiry, there was a ton of VIX calls that expired worthless. Yeah. But I would think, you know, this is the VVIX, which is measuring the price of options on the VIX. I would think that if we were really getting like crazy demand for calls and like everyone's betting on a long vol event, I would think yeah. this VVIX Go would down. be a lot higher. You know, if there's yeah. like huge demand for the VIX calls and we're just not really seeing it. So it's a little strange. Yeah. I so, wondered yeah, but, if you could make anything out of it. To me, yeah. it's you know, you know, there's a lot of call selling going on, too, right? Yeah, and that that's could what's be been case. working forever. Exactly. I mean, I so. to be honest, like all the positioning indicators that I look at, they're really saying that there's a lot of investors that are getting heavily involved in the market. I mean, I think there was a lot of hedging going on in the first half of the year. But those hedges just didn't work. Like if we look at this is the Naeem Exposure Index. Yeah. This is active equity fund managers, and it's just showing their exposure to the market. And right now it's at an 83.6, which is pretty yeah. high. So I think into the quarter end, like I said, I think a lot of investors are really just stopped into the market. And now everyone is positioned for the 40% rally in the NASDAQ to happen in the first half. So I think uh, some of these like AI themes. Anyone uh, positioned for a forty percent decline into the fall? I mean the the VIX calls <laughs> like you mentioned, but huh? the VIX calls like you mentioned. Perhaps there are some people doing that, but in terms of like the price action of the chart, when it goes up in a straight line, it's tough to think like, oh yeah, everyone's bearish. The market just keeps going up. Um, so it's tough. I think at this point, I don't think everyone's but... bearish anymore. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I have people saying, bring on David Hunter, who I've interviewed, you know, he's a melt up guy. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, they want it. Everyone wants to, you know, cheerlead. So yeah. I think most people are bullish. I think they're, um, disparaging the bears. You know, Kalanovic and all those guys and people on Twitter, you'll see tweets, you know, rest in peace, bears and ha 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 bears. Oh, yeah. Bears uh, are in hibernation again. And 
the, they'll do reverse split. <laughs> oh yeah, long VIX product. So um, I think there's a lot of celebration by the bulls right now. Yeah, I'm seeing pretty much the same thing. So I think up until about like a month ago, you could say like, yeah, we're, you know, we're really climbing the wall of worry, et cetera, et cetera. But no, there, no one's worried about anything with the 13 VIX. I mean, they were worried for a few hours when uh, there was going to be a march on Moscow. And, oh, and yeah. that's what I mean. So there's another thing. So, you know, there is an expression, anything that could go wrong in a bull market doesn't and in a bear it does mm -hmm. and um you know it's just like the banks people think that's behind us yeah okay oh there wasn't a, a, a civil war in russia that's behind us um so all these things um uh people are just fearless right now yeah so uh, and it would have been a different story if you'd gone into Moscow. So oh, we're yeah, like one sure. event away from changing these grinding, like that Apple chart. Mm -hmm. You have like one $5 down day. And that whole uptrend from the March lows will be negated. Exactly. So, so I'm, I'm seeing the same thing. And I think once we get this flip into the next quarter, book. yeah, that is really when we could start to see some of these things like i know you guys were talking earlier about the tlt yeah yeah i think like say if you do have like you know your portfolio is long and you know, you've participated in a lot of these gains i think this could be a pretty good diversifier right here yeah um let me just maybe reset. they work uh the way they were they, they used to uh you know part of my uh i think that yields could drop on a risk off event. Yep. Yeah, and I think what we're seeing here is but TLT. I'm supposed to be asking you what you think. Um uh do you like TLT? I like it here. So I've been trading the TLT pretty much all year so far and I've been trading this range and so far this year it's been a good trade for me. Yeah. I was lucky enough to be long the TLT when that banking crisis kicked off. Yeah. And I think that's really the benefit of the TLT because let's say like you're just not positioned in this thing, you know, when something like the banking crisis kicks off, that's where you just get a huge gap higher in, in an instrument like this. And it's not really like you can predict, you know, when the next shoe is going to drop or when we're going to get that really recessionary data point or anything like that. So that's why I've kind of just been keeping a position in this thing. And I've really just been trading this range. Right now, I did establish a position in it, maybe in the last like three or four weeks. Yeah. And to be honest, it just looks like the supply here is just starting to dry up. And this thing is starting to move up the right side of its base. Yeah, it closes over 104 can look pretty good. Yeah, so here's another thing I'm looking at. This is really cool. So on the TLT, you know, on these charts, I have... Uh, the value areas, which are pretty much just market profile levels. Mm -hmm. And what I like here is, if you look, the monthly value area for June, here we are, we've just been trading inside of it all month. So really yeah. just a sideways move. This right over here, this shaded area is going to be our new value area once the calendar flips into July. And if you look how thin this new monthly value area is, a lot of times when you have a thin value area, it just means price has really been tight for a long time. That's where you can get bigger moves in an asset when the price is really consolidated. You can see here, it's trading right around all of these key moving averages and all the moving averages are kind of bunched together. Yeah. So that's why I kind of like this one. Like if you are just like, yeah, you know what? I'm long the market. You know, it's been the best trade. I think this is a good asset to have as well, because if we get one of those shock events, whether it's geopolitical yeah. or whether it's the economy, I think this could really help the portfolio. Yeah, so it I, could be I a good it hedge. In. It was a terrible hedge uh, a couple of years ago till we bottomed. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Well, you know, Andrew, I really like uh, your uh, your approach to the markets and how you look under the surface for things and uh uh, very, you know, insightful 
uh, things we that you bring up during your, our interviews. So um, best way for people to follow you or get in touch with you, um, subscribe, be part of your trading family. Yeah, best way to get in touch with me. You can see me right over here on Twitter. So we're at Real Pristine Cap. And then we also have our Substack right here, which is pristinecapital.substack.com. Okay. So you can check this out right here. Yeah, and that's the best way to get in touch. We do a nightly research note. And then we also have a Discord as well. Okay. All right, Andrew. Uh, you know, you're already my trading warrior brother. I hope you have a great summer trading season. And you as well. Catch up with, yeah, catch up with you in the fall. Rooting for you, buddy. Absolutely. Likewise, Dale. Thanks so much for having me on. All right. Andrew O'Connell. Follow him at Pristine Capital. And uh, as you can see, there's some uh, very nice insights the way he looks at things. Uh, we can learn from everyone, and I think you could learn from Andrew for sure. Uh, so that's a wrap, everyone. Uh, you're welcome, Laura. Uh, AJ, they're thanking you, Andrew. And you could join the team in 17 minutes on the morning edge. Good hunting the rest of the day, everyone. Don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Adios. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.